हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल माय नेम इज अशोक दिस वीडियो इज द पार्ट ऑफ एपेक्स ट्रिगर्स इन ट्रू प्रिपरेशन सीरीज इन विच वी विल लर्न एंड राइट एपेक्स ट्रिगर फॉर ए गिवन रिक्वायरमेंट और यूज केस एंड दिस इज द यूज केस दैट वी विल कवर टूडे इन दिस वीडियो विच से क्रिएट ए कस्टम सोल्यूशन इन सेल्स फोर्स टू एड एन आइडेंटिफाई टू ऑल द अनडिलीटेड लीड्स इट मे बी सेम्स टू यू वेरी सिंपल यूज केस बट बिलीव मी इट इज नॉट दैट मच सिंपल and you will definitely learn lots of new things while completing this okay and now let's discuss more about this huge case which says add an identifier to all the undeleted leads so here first question you might be getting in your mind that what does it means by identifier all right so here identifier means a unique value which can help us to know that is this lead required after deletion or not i mean is this lead undeleted or not so simple right and now next question you might be getting how we add that identifier with lead records so for that what we can do we can simply create a custom field and whenever any lead record get restored at the time we can update value in that field and later to identify or filter all the undeleted records we can use this same field right so this is how we can add an identifier to know whether this is the fresh lead or restored one and as of now this requirement can be only achieved using apex triggers no other automation tools can help us to achieve this requirement including flows as well because record triggered flows doesn't support undelete operations okay and now before moving into practical implementation let's have a look on some prerequisites which will help us to complete this requirement and first we have create new custom field so as we have discussed to add an identifier with undeleted lead records we will create a custom field so let's open our lead object and add a new custom field with name is restored in this field we will store values something like true or false i mean if record is restored then true else it should be false so here we will select checkbox as data type and click on next now here let's enter field name and as we have discussed default value should be false so let this unchecked selected and click on next okay we have added a new custom field with name is restored now next we have on which object we will create trigger answer of this should be very simple for you because here only one object involved in this requirement that is lead and also triggering point is lead record and deletion so trigger should be created on lead object next we have which trigger event we will use to complete this requirement so as requirement says we have to add an identifier to all the undeleted lead records which means here we will update a field on lead record when it is getting undelete or restore so here trigger operation will be undelete but what should be the type of trigger like before or after of course after because we do not have before undelete trigger event right so here we will use after undelete as a trigger event and last question we have which context variable we will use to access triggering records so here again we will use trigger dot new because here simply we will iterate all the lead records which are coming in trigger iteration but if we will require to work with record ids and records both then we will use trigger dot new map as well and somewhere if you get confused or don't know which trigger events should be used then you can refer this table or watch my first video of this series as well where i have explained all these in detail okay and now by considering all these points let's move into practical implementation and open our prepared id here i will go with developer console so let's open that and here first let's create trigger on lead object so click on file then new then apex trigger and here provide lead trigger as trigger name and select lead as object okay a new trigger is created on lead object with before insert event but as we have discussed to complete our current requirement we will use after and delete trigger event so let me replace it with after and delete okay 
now let's create a handler or helper class so we can write our logics there okay here simply we have created an apex class with name lead trigger helper now here first we'll create a method then we will write code into that okay here we have created a public static void method with name update is restored lead flag and taking list of lead as input so once we will call this method from trigger then we'll pass trigger dot new into this as a input okay now here what we want to do we want to update is restored field for all the lead records which are coming in this list and you know as i said triggers can process up to 200 records in single page or iteration which means here in this list also we can get up to 200 records so here we need to write code in such a way so that can process an update field on all the records which are coming into this list right and to iterate or work with each record we will use for each loop so let me use that here okay now under this loop let's update value of is restored field to true okay now let's call this method in trigger all right here we have called this method in only case of after in delete trigger event so finally how this will work whenever we will try to undelete any lead record then this trigger will get called and this condition will also become true and program will call this method and pass trigger.new as input and now in this method we will get list of all the lead records and here we are iterating each lead record and updating is restored field to true okay this is so simple right but do you think this will work i don't think so but still let's try to test it so let's open our org again and open leads tab now here let's delete one lead record record deleted successfully now you know all the soap deleted records are available under recycle bin so let's open that by clicking on app launcher icon okay now here you can see our lead record which we have recently deleted now to undelete it let's select and click on restore but we are getting an error here which says record is read only now here question is why we are getting this error because our code was absolutely correct so the answer is yes our code was absolutely correct but in after trigger context we can't update any field of triggering record in after context triggering records are read only here triggering record means due to those this trigger invocation happen here in this case our this lead record is the triggering record and here you can see we are updating field value of all the records which are coming in this list and in this list we are passing trigger.new as input in other words here in after trigger context we are trying to update fields in triggering records which is not allowed in apex only in before context we can update triggering record fields but in undelete operation we only have after event not before right now major question is how we will achieve this requirement or what we can do in this case now here i am assuming that we all are clear with the problem which we are facing here let me repeat again here we are trying to update field value in triggering records in after trigger context but salesforce only allows to update triggering records in before context not in after and with undelete operation we don't have before context so anyhow we have to achieve this requirement in after context only okay now let's see what we can do in this case so here problem is in after trigger context we can't make field update in triggering records because they are read only which means when salesforce execute triggers in after context at that time they mark record object as read only and pass in context variables like in trigger.new and trigger.newMap. it means 
in these records we can't do any modification because wherever their objects are stored in runtime memory they are stored as read only right but what will happen if we create a new object or instance of these records will that also be read only no that won't read only we can update fields there but now question is how we can create their new object so for that there are multiple ways we have in apex like by querying these records again from database by passing these record ids so once you will query these records again from database then they will store into different object or instance in memory so we can do any modifications there but here we are increasing sql query count that we definitely don't want if there are alternatives so another way we have using clone apex method something like this now in this clone live we will get a complete new instance of lead object with all the existing values but in runtime memory it has separate space and existence so now if we will update field values in this cloned object then it will work fine but to update only one field this is not a good or recommended way in this case what we can do we can simply create a new instance of lead object like this and you know to update any record in salesforce we just need to pass record id and fields which we want to update right then why can't we assign id and is restored field values here in this blank object and update in database using dml statement let me show you what i'm talking about okay so here what we have done first we have declared a list variable to hold multiple lead instances which we are creating here and in this loop we are creating and adding new instance of lead object and assigning values in id and restored field okay now finally out of this loop we have used update dml statement to update all these lead records into database here you might be thinking why we require to use update dml statement externally because to update fill values in triggering record it is not required yeah that's true if we want to update fill values in triggering record then external dml statement doesn't require but here we are creating different instances for all these lead records to avoid read only error and in memory these new instances are completely different to triggering records so that's why we have to write external dml statement to update records in database and this update statement will start a different transaction i mean these records will get saved into separate transaction so there we won't get read only error okay now let's try to undelete that lead record again all right now we can see success message it means read only error is not coming and now let's open lead step again and see record is restored or not here we can see that lead record which means record is restored successfully now to verify that field value let's open this record and here we can see is restored checkbox is checked which means it is true and our trigger is working as expected so that's it in this video where we have learned how to update triggering records in after trigger context as well and i hope this video helped you to learn something new If yes then please help me too by like and subscribe my youtube channel and as of now i have created five practical videos in this series if my videos are really helping you and you want me to create more videos on practical scenarios then do let me know in the comments and also don't forget to share your feedback in comments that really matters to me thank you so much for watching have a nice day